Hello! Welcome back to... Arknights. Um, I have just had my mind blown by one character, and... It's Mlynar. Mlynar? I don't know how the fuck to say it. Um, ELS from the Discord server, also my friend in the game, is allowing me to use his Mlynar during this... And I did it in a practice run? I don't know what to say. <laughs> that was insane. Like, there was no, no other way to say it. He is so strong. And I probably even used him wrong, is the crazy part. Hey, maid. Everyone else has already scampered off. Why are you still here? Shouldn't you have left as well, Madam Sirius? Sirius? I don't know. Do I really have to? Just because you tell me to? The statue is the fruit of everyone's labors. If anything happened to it, how could I break the bad news to them? Is it the fruit of everyone's labors or NCO's? No wonder I saw the Saintess hold you back just now. I think I saw her tell you something too. You hardly sound surprised. I'm not an idiot. She looks completely blindsided. How, how could that possibly be? It's just that looking at it from her perspective, the best position she can be in is knowing a little bit, but not too much. And so she sent <clears throat> you to go for the last mile for her, huh? Well, what is it then? Oh, the people currently drawing close. One is Degenbrecher, while the other is the Trilby Asher from Victoria. A Trilby Asher? He couldn't... No, he wouldn't go that far. Did the Saintess ask you to stay just so you could warn me about this? Let's go with that. Allow me to look after the statue in your stead. <laughs> No, she wants the face destroyed. Bum, 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 bum. This ends here. Uh, sure enough, you are the Black Knight. I will not underestimate you. But that was precisely why you should realize that you cannot best me. Oh? I like the confidence, but my patience runs thin. The way you scurry and flit about has already started to bore me. My apologies, madam. I have not... I have been derelict in my duty, if you feel that way. However, if I may speak freely, Madam Degenbrecher, I feel no murderous intent in your swings. You were invincible during your days in Casimir's. Uh, the Black Nut that- The Black Knight- Nut. <laughs> the Black Knight that struck terror into the hearts- <laughs> Into our opponents with a mighty blade. But now, you're reduced to using these edgeless toys. Uh, these edgeless toys will be enough to be for the likes of you. I only ever use the Lithanian Greatsword in competitions. The sponsors demanded it. The Greatsword wielding the Th Lithanian Warrior. The artsless freak. Call me what you will. It matters not. But it's time to cut to this dance short. You seem to have forgotten something. The reason why I started using the Degenbreckers in the first place. What? Ah! The frosty bite of her blow stops his words before they leave his mouth. The frigid winds of Cherig stabs him. Cherig stabs him. The unfeeling mountain snows crush him, and the ice cold Degenbreckers slam into him with all the force of a glacier. There is no resisting such an attack. <clears throat> this is but a warning. There are many who wish to cause trouble for NCOs, and if I could crush them all dead, there would be a lot less trouble for me. But unfortunately, there are some people who much, who are much more useful alive than dead. You, for example. <laughs> I see. I thank you for your mercy, Madam Degenbrecher. These weapons, I use them for a simple reason. They have no edge, so it's much easier for me to keep men like you alive. If I were to use a little more force with these blunt weapons, most would become nothing more than minced meat. That's how it's always been from the very start. Among those who could step up to fight me, many would be easily crushed. It does not matter if you are a caster of a caster of Lithanian or a knight of Casimir's. In the end, you are the same. Faith, ideals, grit and perseverance, firm determination. They all fall before sheer brute force. It's hilarious. Being broken too easily is still is its own complication. The woman who took her weapon's name looks down disdainfully upon the Victorian before her. He had been by no means an easy foe to handle, so it was up to her, and only her, to face him. But even so, it has not been particularly difficult to defeat him. The road from being a destitute 
destitute artsless nobody to becoming the Black Knight, three-time consecutive cha champion, was not an easy one to walk. Compared to that, anything that came after was only a trifle. <laughs> By your standards as the Black Knight, the only, the natural-born warrior, there can't be many who aren't considered fragile. Hardly. If you had been even the slightest bit more serious, I would have been put in a lot more effort. Unfortunately for me, as an intelligence officer, it is not in battle where I have to get serious. Is he still trying to run from her? Well, they've already climbed up all the way, this, all the scaffolding. These trophy ashers are skilled indeed. There's not a person in all of Kerrig who could scarper from the mountains to this island while getting hunted by Degenbrecker. Could there be many such people in Victoria? Truly, there are terrors all about these lands. Indeed, there are terrors all about these lands, and we must cope with them in our own way every day. I have a half a mind to find a replacement for myself as Saintus. Oh, perish the thought. Wasn't it you who sought to be the Saintus in the first place? You truly do resemble your brother in that regard. You both love giving yourselves things to do. I am nothing like him. Oh, yes. All right. He's very much like you. Then, is that better? Char. Yes. Do you still remember our agreement? Hmm? Which one? This is no time for jokes, Char. Yes, of course I remember. Karen Gonder need only watch over her people, nothing more. Yes. At the time, I had already begun doing some things under the table. If we depended on her even for this matter, then whether it was for it was him or me, our ideals would be put empty words in bluster. It's not quite so easy being a bystander, you know. I ask her only to be patient for a little while longer. Alright then. Although I'm not sure if she can even hear our little agreement. Anyway, I just came here. My mouth is very dry. One moment. <sighs> Water. I just came to see if we could change the statue a little bit. <laughs> That's all. I can't believe you haven't given up on that yet. Oh no, we lost connection. This is one matter that I'm definitely not giving up on. <laughs> Whoa. That's so cool. She's just watching them beat the shit out of each other. Wow, I think the statue might be a bit slanted after Degenbrecker's kick just now. That Troby Asher isn't half bad either. Him grabbing the statue's finger to adjust the balance of his body sure was surprising. <laughs> There's the real deal. What the fuck? Do you think they can help me thin out that face a bit? <laughs> I was far too naive from the start, thinking that it didn't matter that what I looked like on the outside made me not really care much about my appearance. After many interactions with others, <laughs> she's just like, like, I wonder if they'll knock down my face. <laughs> After many interactions with others, my aesthetic <laughs> senses changed alongside the people, and so we end up with the look I have today. But those drawings and those ancient tomes persisted all the while. I should have taken those books away from <laughs> Edelwee's clan when they were out of when they were out of the house. Who expected them to suddenly decide to build a statue for Karagander anyway? Those two sure climbed up to the top of the statue real quick. Ah, that's right. Shave the cheek on the side down a little bit more. Damn it, don't shave down the sides of her hair too. I quite like those. <laughs> From this angle, it doesn't look half bad though, does it? Where was I? Right, after getting to know Enya, I started to look after my appearance more. I would always go with her when she would sneak out for walks, recommending me various cute ornaments and trinkets. After who knows how long, I started to like those things myself. Hmm, maybe we can replace that lock of hair that got shaved off with a big piece of jewelry? I should write that down somewhere. Oh, wait. Must be tough being a Trilby Asher. <laughs> Must be tough being a trolley Asher. <laughs> Looked like he was about to jump down from the top of the head himself, but then Degenbrecker sent him flying with a mean kick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She's still just there like, hmm. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, this is so funny. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my eyes are watering now. Now that I think about it, <laughs> those other fellows that Degenbrecker fought, I wonder if they felt the same way as this trophy Asher, knowing that you are not truly a match, but with other no other option but to struggle for your life. I'm sure if you'll have the opportunity to get out in one piece. Until finally you realize that there really is no other such opportunity. No. <laughs> uh, those with more mercenary motivations for battle are much weaker than him. Are you satisfied? Yes? You seem to be quite pleased with what <laughs> we're watching us give the statue a light trim. Is it to your liking now? It's not bad, I'd say. Good. Where are you going? Despite the fall, he's not the type to die so easily. He'll get back up soon enough. <laughs> I'll resume keeping an eye on him. You're certain he won't best you next time? He was no match for you during that fight earlier, but I fear that he had a truly... He hadn't put his... Whew, I fear that if he had truly put his heart into it, he would have proven the victor quite easily. Moreover, there's hardly a guarantee that he's not bait, correct? I'll leave that sort of thinking up to NCOs. NCOs cannot be here at this moment. Surely you know be better than me. Allow me to take the lead. You? Or to be more precise, allow the Saintess. Yar buzzes this communicator <laughs> terminal in her hand. Did you get all that, Saintess? Allow me to take the lead. You did well, Degenbrecker. My pleasure. We'll be coming to the bonfire banquet tonight. I'm afraid not. I'm not fond of busy parties. What a shame. What did you have in mind? I would like you to watch over the, a foreign envoy. I believe diplomacy will prove more effective than force in this case. He might not actually be a foreign envoy. He might very well be. All right. I am in your hands, Saintus. Hmm. <laughs> Derpy face. Uh, you know the exit's the other direction, right? I know. What is she gonna do? That's good. Woo! Should be able to pull through, right? Alright, stop rubbernecking. Clear the way. Let's think of a way to get him out of that hole first. Based on his clothes, he looks like some kind of foreigner. I don't even think... I don't think we... <laughs> I don't think even we could handle water that cold. Ah. Hello, Harold. Hey, mind if I ask what's going on here? Some poor fellow just flew over, our, flew on over here from the island in the middle of the lake. Smashed a hole right through the ice. What? Shh. Oh, all right, coming through. Make way. Excuse me. Thank you. That's good. That's hilarious. Harold squeezes his way through the crowd, and the moment he sees what the bus is about, he can't help but laugh. A perfect circle has been punched through the frozen surface of the lake, and in the center of that circle floats a corpse. And so it fell out to, <laughs> to come to the rescue. Uh, oh, these old bones <laughs> ain't spry enough to handle that. Excuse me, anyone got some kind of stick or, <laughs> or the other on hand? He's a friend of mine, and I'm here to get him out of here. Uh, nothing like that over here. Maybe you can head over to the nearby finning village. Ask someone there if they can borrow a finning pole? Fishing or finning? Okay. No need. I've got something that can help. Nice, thank- Eh, Rogeland! Oh. Hey, Dadushka. Fancy meeting you here. I'll lend you my weapon. Let's get that guy out of here. What does Leto use? Let's find out. Oh. Yeah, just stab him with that real quick. It might work. <laughs> Oh, cheers. We'll help too. It's the Trilby Asher. Using Rosalind's weapon, the people work together to dredge the corpse up and out of the hole. Looks like he still hasn't kicked the bucket. I probably shouldn't be saying this, but if he really had died, I would have had a whole lot of, of beast shite on my hands. Thankfully, the one who did this is the same idea, so they held back a bit. Let's get this fellow somewhere warm for now. Yep. She not realize that it's the Trilby Asher? 
Weird. Okay. I'm so hungry right now. Oh, shopkeep. Allow us to borrow your fireplace for a spell? Sure. Isn't this John? He should be up the mountain. How did he get his ass kicked down here? Up the mountain? You've met him before? Yep. I met him up there. And then what? Ah, uh, no, nothing. It'd be a pain to explain. What about you, Dadushka? Where's Arctaz? Did they separate? Probably, I mean, probably after fighting like that. What are you going to do with these next two days? Me? <laughs> I'm just here to clap at the Cherigonder statue unveiling ceremony tomorrow as a Victorian delegate. After that, I guess I'll head back home straight away. If I manage to find one last opportunity before I go, I'd like to walk about and buy some souvenirs for the wife and kid back home. Sounds like you've got a lot of free time on your hands, Dadushka. When you're young, you feel like you have a thousand and one different things that you need to get done. When you're on my age, you'll learn that some free time never did any harm. <coughs> ah, the dead rise. <laughs> oh my god. How's it hanging, John? Madam Lorena and the Lord Viscount. Good, good. I was just about to have a chat with my dearly departed grandfather. The hell happened to you anyway? Uh, let's make sure I'm recording, actually, because it was acting weird earlier. Okay. The hell happened to you? It's a bit of a long story. Are you getting along with your father? Eh, all right enough, I guess. Father, did I miss something? It's a bit of a long story. Uh, seriously, what happened, John? You've managed to become chummier with Rosalind than me. Right under my nose. Hi, Enya. Finally found you. Eh, Saintus? The Saintus? Omenix? Okay. Ah, oh, Leto, you're here too. Perfect. Me? Lord Viscount, I hope you remember tonight's bonfire banquet by the lakeside. The one that will serve as a warm-up before tomorrow's ceremony? I had heard that you had been having your fill of scenic tours of Keurig lately, and I feared that you had forgotten, which is why I decided to give you this little reminder. Of course I remember. Worry not, for I shall definitely be there. Will you be coming too, Leto? To the bonfire banquet? Sure, I'll come. I believe this Trilby Asher is a friend of yours. Yes, quite. As a friend of the Lord Viscount, naturally you too are a guest of Keurig. I hope that you will do me the honor of attending our humble banquet. Whatever reason could I have to refuse an invitation from the Saintess herself? Very well, it's settled then. Dirt face. Okay, time to get into the fight. Um, I had to promote to her because she was the te cheapest one for me to promote. Because I don't have her maxed out yet. Um, that's why Gravel is promoted before anyone else. And there he is. Before, I couldn't even survive two seconds. I leveled up baseline to tank the magic users, the arts users. Level and let me tell you... A new challenge. This dude's OP. And that's the only thing I can say about that, really. It would seem they have yet to remember what to fear. Okay, creep show. I join in the performance at the right. Hail like the shooting star. That's uh, what they say. I'm not sure where to put him, really. All those I have yet to abandon. But. Oh, that burp hurt my soul. Ready to heal. Um there is but a sign. There he is. And that's why I said he's OP. Because holy you can fuck do something else. Tail like a shooting star. That's what they say. Still mulling things over, Dr. Perfectionist? Yes, ma'am. Doctor? With him playing his instrument, too, you want my his shield is so nice. In the past. Okay. Don't be afraid. Come to your senses. Please, come to your senses. Uh, I place her here as well. Now I just wait for a bunch of enemies to build up right here, and then I use his ability again, and then it's just over. It's really fair. First aid boxes with the medication. Use that, here. and then use that, and then. That is my side. Come on, let's pick up the pace. You want my emotional meaning less here? 
Riveting gameplay. <laughs> you want my opinion? Still solving yourself in the past? It's game over for you. Doctor? I can heal that wound in no time. Can you hear it? The restoration. Oh, I fucked it up anyway. Any instructions? Come on! Let's pick up the pace! Right, I was supposed to replace baseline after his ability ended. Well, I mean, if only two get through, it's not that big of a deal. Opening Let's, with uh, a tuba. A rare arrangement. On standby. Ah, uh, fuck, okay. Let me retry that and actually use it correctly. I was supposed to replace baseline with Liskarm, and then Liskarm would charge his ability faster, and then he'd use it quicker. A music score or a battle plan? You have to give me one of those at least. I'll definitely prove myself this time. Warm up my fingers oh, first. right. I'm also supposed to use her to distract the snowball guy. The nuke. Oh, fuck. I forgot these are shooting star. That's what they say. Please hold on. All those I have yet to abandon. Take one more step. Nice. Really it didn't work. Today? Okay. Any orders it was half a second too late. Am I the only a sure hope? That's what happens when you mess up while performing. Face is Still mulling things. Still talking yourself in the past. And okay, now there's the abilities over. In your band? Yes, man. Oh, sir. I mean. Feels fresh every time. Ah, losing sight. Please. Any instructions for me? And then. That's like a like a shooting star. That's All right. what they say. You here to distract one of the enemies. Okay, never mind. Charging. Um, Still mulling things to emotion is meaningless here. Sunlight will have to wait. Ah, there you go. Oh shit, right. I forgot that. Yeah, that's how it yeah. That's what happened in the practice, too. There you go. <laughs> okay. What a character. That's fucking nuts. I'm gonna get one star, probably, but I don't care, really. How long do you plan on standing here? He already knows of this place. He'll turn up sooner or later. And what will you do once he turns up? Kill him. Murdering a foreign dignitary is a serious crime, you know. We shall see. Why do you go so far for Carrick's sake? When you're not of Carrick yourself. I am I Is it still considered for Carrick's sake if it's NCO's ambition? Wow, that was an awful one for me to read for some reason. Who can deny that up till now, despite him having his own lofty goals, that there is a part of them that is for Carrick's sake? That sort of praise is probably what he would least like to hear. <laughs> I, you still haven't answered my question, you know. But NCO has once mentioned to me that perhaps Karagondor truly existed. I thought to myself that maybe one day I could fight those so-called gods with my own two hands. Now I see that it was simply wishful thinking. And why is that? NCO has already dropped that particular plan for one. If he had stuck to it, do you think you'd face down a goddess who just might really exist? Perhaps. Here I can only find that sort of excitement during avalanches. If I ever had the opportunity, I would definitely try it. Do you think you will win? No. I have stood against the avalanche, but I have never once triumphed. I understand. You are simply in it for the challenge, and you consider the matters that are happening on this island to be suitable for that purpose? It's hardly as, as lofty as you think. This is just who I have grown up to be, nothing more. Very well said. You may head back now, Degenbrecker. You will not find your battlefield here. If that is what the Sanctus wills, then forgive me for being unable to comply. I will decide my own battlefield. And what if I said that that is what Karagondor wills? I will then wonder, why are you the one conveying Karagondor's will? I am the Sanctus' mate, after all. So what are you trying- <laughs> What are you saying is- What you are saying is that the will of the Sanctus is the will of Karagondor? Rather, that Karagondor supports the Great Saintess's opinion on the matter. At least, that is my guess. 
Hmm. She's getting suspicious. <laughs> ah, the trail will be Asher. The Black Knight is no fool. Rather than searching all over for me, she will instead be watching over here. She knows that I will return, and return I must. <sighs> if only I can return home alive. He's kind of consigning himself to death a little early, huh? If I had only guessed that this place would be the center of my worries. No, how could I have guessed? How could anyone have thought that the Enciodes had the brass courage to use an entire nation's faith as a pretense for his own schemes? He truly is someone that the Duke was wise to invest in. And that Saintus, is she really not aware of the single matter going on behind the scenes? What's going on? I still don't know! What the fuck is happening, guys? And Dagenbrecker? She couldn't possibly be quite so single-minded as to have missed the forest of tr the tree? What? The forest for the tree? This is a rock? Why have you come, traveler from afar? I am but a man of steadfast faith. <laughs> Here to admire her visage. She tires and wishes to rest for today. Come back tomorrow. I heard that Kiaragander welcomes believers from afar. Do you mean to say that this is no longer the case? The pi the pious need not prove themselves. Pious do not need to prove themselves. While the insincere insincere need to waste their words. You are not to take a step further today, says she. And if I insist. What? <laughs> Back to where you started, bitch! The Trilby Asher looks all about him. The main path by Lake Silver is bustling with activity today. And, oh, most days, and today's no exception, which is why it causes no small amount of turned heads when he suddenly appears out of nowhere. <laughs> suddenly, he smacked himself in the face. Hard. Hey, when did that guy pop up there? Look, he's slapping himself for some reason. Think he's some kind of lunatic? Haha. <laughs> The trophy asher takes no note of the people around him, simply turning his body in the direction of the statue of Karagander in an imitation to those devout followers. He performs a quick gesture of prayer. Karagander's blessing be upon you. This was the first time he had done such an act since stepping into this land. After doing so, he turns to leave without a moment's hesitation. He had not yet noticed that, from not too far away, there's a pair of eyes watching his every move. Dagenbrecker isn't a very talkative woman, but so she probably won't tell any about this, would she? I don't think I went too far either, did I? Uh, I've said this before, but staying a spectator is harder than it looks. I bet it would be, especially when you have the power to be able to help your people constantly. She sighs once more, then turns, looking every bit like a woman grumbling about the troublesome requests of her younger sister, before blending into the throng of people like she was never there. She just teleports him away. That's good. I like that. Stop right there. Huh? Hello? Captain? Vintner? Vintner? Who are you? Well, it's like this, see? There's going to be a banquet held by Lake Silver tonight, right? I'm here to deliver the wine. Wine? Oh, Vintner. Okay, like wine vintage and whatever. Okay. I heard the news about that earlier. Come with me. I'll need to verify this. All right, sure. Stand over there. Don't move. Pat him down. All right. Boys, I'm just trying to drop off some drinks. We really need to do this whole song and dance. These are the special circumstances. I appreciate your cooperation. Cooperation. <laughs> if you really are... <laughs> if, you are <laughs> if you really are who you are... If you really are who you say you are... You will offer our deepest apologies later. Ah, I'm afraid that you two won't have the chance to do that. What? The Vintner... Presses down on a device hanging by his waist, and the security cameras in the room begin to rotate wildly as if possessed. Gah! There's an enemy! Nice try. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> After the two shkazata fall for this vintner, <laughs> swiftly begins to operate the terminal. 
I see metals with the terminal, the cameras in the corners of the room briefly halt before returning to their normal activity. From my earlier investigations, I knew that Kerrig managed to get a previous gen OS, but it's got two fatal flaws. I recommend you upgrade to the latest generation when you can. Naturally, if Kerrig were to become part of Victoria, we would provide one free of charge. Okay. He breathes a sigh of relief, but then immediately doubles over. <laughs> Looks like my wounds are about to reopen. The destructive power of the Black Knight is no joke. Yeah, I, I knew it was the Trilby Asher. She can hardly be everywhere all at once. That's her Karagander. I'll worry about that later. At least she didn't prevent me from finding this place. He stands up, ambling towards the nearby barrel of wine. The barrel is heavy, but as he draws close, it is immediately obvious that there is a distinct lack of scent of wine in the air. Ha ha ha. What is stored in the barrel was not wine, but metal. I had investigated the amount of metal Kerrig is procuring, and at the time, nobody had any issue with the numbers. But if, say, the metal was that was to be used in the construction of the statue was not all put towards that purpose, where, then, did all the remaining metal go? And where is this metal in the barrels slated to go next? <laughs> I said that while the Black Knight's fearsome, she's not as strong as to cut through steel like butter. And I was right. He turns back to operate the terminal once more, and his fingers unceasingly type away at the keyboard. Various charts and diagrams continuously pop up on the screen above him. After a long, long while, he finally stands up. Anyways... Yeah, I knew it. There's still a few hours as we go to the banquet. So allow me to give the quick inspection, NCOs. Are you really so much a fool that you would dare to stand against Victoria? That's crazy. She should have just killed him. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You saw your father, and then you gave him a kick. Yep, but real good. I wasn't that angry to begin with, but once I saw that he looked what that he looked like what I assumed my papa would look like, I had a sudden urge to give him a real big kick. <laughs> At a girl. Speaking of which, I had the pleasure of meeting Patriarch Arctaz once when I was just arriving in Carrig. But I haven't seen him since. If I remembered how he looked, you wouldn't have had to wander around willy-nilly to find him. Hey, are you trying to say that I actually do look a lot like him? Hmm. Well, I think about it more. Thanks to that beard of his, even if he had, if even I had been drinking with him yesterday, I don't think I would have been that easy to notice. What? Hmm. Well, now that I think about it more, thanks to that beard of his. Even if I had been drinking with him yesterday, I don't think it would have been that easy to notice. I told him already that bearded look just ain't isn't in these days. What if he shaved it off? Eh? Oh, nothing. Don't mind me. Why is he so curious? Are you propositioning him? <laughs> hey, look over there. That's a whole lot of burden beasts. I'm kidding. It's a joke from my vampire series. Oh, the villagers from nearby are here, too. I'm thinking that it might be a mighty fine night. Oh, it's from earlier. Eh? There's a burden beast bumping its head against you. Oh! If it isn't my lovely Lily. Oh, it's Lily! Haha, <laughs> that girl ran over the moment she spotted you. Good girl, good girl. Hey, Dadushka, this is the Lily you're talking about. This is the Lily you're talking about? Indeed, she was the first burden beast I met when I arrived in Kirig. And she has become, dare I say, my dearest friend ever since I arrived. Oh, aren't you a little cutie pie? Rough ring. Oh, that's so cute. I heart Kerrig. I'm special. This is so cute. I love this. Oh, shit. Sorry. Rough brain. Ooh, can I pet her? But of course, Lily's an affectionate girl. Affectionate homing. <laughs> I think she likes you. <laughs> Rosalind. It seems you really do have Keurig blood in you. Whoa, she's licking me. Do you want to ride her? Can I? It should be all right. Right, Leonis? Oh, it's him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, kid. All right. Help me up a bit, Dadushka. Okay, grab onto my hand in one, two, three. Excited rumbling. Wow, Lily's really steady. I think I'll go on a stroll with her. Go on ahead now. <laughs> She sure is a lively little kid now, isn't she? You don't need to tell me. My daughter was the same at her age. Here for you. This is some of our best cheese. Just finished ripening today. 
I remember that you were going to back home pretty soon, so I whipped up this block just for you. I'd hoped I would see you tonight, so I brought it along just in case. I appreciate the gesture, but are you sure it's all right? Doesn't your family need the cheese to sell? Oh, I think nothing of it. You've helped my family and our burden beasts plenty. I'd say that I owe you for medical expenses. So, here, consider this cheese your veterinary fee. <laughs> all right, if you insist. Couldn't ask for a better parting gift, if you ask me. Truth be told, when you first showed up, we were pretty wary of you. But after the, after a whole month with you, I feel like we're best of friends. So I'm not, I'm not going to get too mushy with you. Just remember that the next time you're in Kerrig, 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 will always be have space at the table for you at my farm. I keep saying Kerrig like the coffee maker. I will. I really will. Ah, Leone. Leon? I'm just saying Leon. Fuck it. I should have started that saying that from the start, but... Are you acquainted with the Lord Viscount as well? Ah, Saintus. Yes. Harold here has become a right, right celebrity here in our little village. I see. I hope that you and your burden beasts continue to enjoy yourselves. Oh, please. Getting to meet the Saintus is plenty of joy for me already. This banquet sure is festive. Holy Saintus. Sorry, it's 2 a.m. Indeed. Though, there will be plenty of pomp and circumstance at the ceremony tomorrow. The populace at large will only be able to watch it via the news cameras. Which is why I arranged for this banquet. To allow all of Keurig to enjoy the holiday cheer. You truly are a great saintess. May I ask where the Trilby Asher might be? He's a bit of a somber fellow. Not a great lover of festivities. <laughs> I would hardly say that, my lord. While it's true that I'm not a fan of festive crowds... That has hardly anything to do with my personality. You, I'm afraid that I was observing Keurig's magnificent scenery and lost track of time. Do forgive me, Holy Sanctus. I'm glad to hear that you appreciate Keurig's natural beauty. I hope that you enjoy tonight's banquet just as much. Indeed I will! I keep changing the voice for the Trilby Asher and I don't know why. Oh, that's right, Harold. I have some wine here. Does your friend here drink? Come, let's have a cup or two together. I... The Trilby Asher surreptitiously shares a hand signal with Harold. It is a military hand signal indicating withdrawal. Terribly sorry, loans. I'm afraid the drink will have to wait. High pitched spraying. I'm back to Dushka. Huh? Where'd he go? He's in he got pulled away by his friend in black. John? No way. I do hope that you managed to enjoy yourself at tonight's banquet, my lord. I sure was up until you called me away. Good, because I do not think you will enjoy the next, this next step. Out with it! There's a secret underneath this Karagander statue at the heart of the Lake Silver. Soldiers really hate the word secret, Mr. John Smith. Isn't this your lot's job to figure out these sorts of things rather than ours? Unfortunately, I have no way of solving this particular issue myself. Not words I expected to come out of a Trilby Asher. I'd run into a few obstructions. Wait, am I hearing you right? You failed? No. Though I am unable to ascertain what exactly is down there, the very fact that I am encountering resistance is proof that I am on the right track. Trilby Asher takes out a stack of loose papers from the inner recesses of his coat. Within the stack are photographs, assorted documents, and some handwritten notes. Harold takes a few to look at himself, and immediately, the smile on his face freezes. Goods loaded onto the wine transport carriages. The true flow of the Orion supply chain. Or Orion or, or, or uh, transport route itinerary. What? Itineraries. Duh. Bro, I swear I can speak English. All this intelligence points towards a single fact. Under the island at the heart of the lake lies in sealed secret. No, not just his. But the greatest secret of this entire nation. What is it? Just say it. <laughs> she was spying on them. She's gone. I know. Allowing the daughter of the Keurig politician to hear that was not good. 
I'm a soldier. I only care about real battles. This is something that you intelligence agents should be handling. She barely even knows whose daughter she is. What can she possibly do? If this makes her recognize that it is brewing in the nation and make her cut her visit early, this is not necessarily a bad thing. She is, in the end, merely a citizen of Ursus. I am not one to make an enemy of that empire. Perhaps I misjudged you during our earlier meetups, my good Trilby Asher. You and me both, my lord. Perhaps it is a good thing that people like you and I are wary of one another. Some real words of wisdom you got there. My next words might not be those of wisdom you so adore. You cannot go home empty-handed, my lord. I know. I hope you truly understand that this is the price NCOs must pay her grace. He has crossed the line. Is that what you tell yourself to make it feel better? You're far better at that sort of thing than I am. Oh, great hero. Oh, great hero. The banquet continues. People gathered around the bonfire, singing merry tunes and dancing, welcoming the arrival of tomorrow. In their minds, tomorrow will certainly be a bright, jubilant, festive day, one that would compel anyone to break out into ecstatic dance and vibrant song. I'm probably the one, only one in the room who doesn't feel that way, thought Harold. He suddenly feels a little, a little chilly. The last time he felt such a chill was the very first time he set foot in this land. He felt like he, what he really needed was a bottle of wine. Perhaps a whole barrel. Harold, I've been waiting uh, ages for you. If you were any later, I would have finished the entire bottle myself. <laughs> Look at me. Do I look like the sort of person to miss out on a fine drink? Come, tonight we drink till we drop. He's forgotten some of the finer details of what he did that night. Perhaps he danced a merry jig from his my hometown by the bonfire. Perhaps he grabbed some unlucky fellow to sing some folk songs of Kierig with. Ah, that's right. He seemed to have spent a good time... A good amount of time discussing the finer points of Kierig veterinary techniques with a guardrail. How did he get to this point? Alas, nobody knows. At the very least, he remembered the way back to his bed. However, the distance between the banquet and the bar barracks is no short stroll. First, he had to follow along the lakeside path until it joined with the main street at the center of town. Along the road, he would run into many elderly folk talking a post -meal taking a post-meal walk and see children playing atop the ice. From here, he could see the distant statue of Kiragander, and all along the roads, there were viewing stations set up just for gazing upon it. They were bustling places filled with... They were bustling places filled with people at all times. Some prayed towards Kiragander, while others took selfies. There are times where, when two diametrically opposed ways of life will clash, but most times they will coexist in some sort of harmony. Such was the way that many things in this land. Continuing on, he passed through the main street, which got busier by the day. He distinctly remembered noticing that some of the stores that were there when he first arrived in Keurig had changed ownership. In a small alley close to the center of the road, there was the latest restaurant that he had fallen in love with. This restaurant had managed to meld together the flavors of Victoria and Keurig together into their dishes, and suffice to say, he was a big fan. The restaurant was run by a young couple, the wife of a Carrig native who had learnt the culinary arts in Victoria, meeting her spouse in the process. The two of them started a family, returning to Carrig to set up their restaurant, hoping that they would be able to have a better life in this flourishing land. After the alley, he had to cross a highway, still under construction, then a patch of woods, before arriving at the hillside where he could look out over the whole land, where a roaring fireplace awaited him. At the moment, when he stepped over the edge of the road onto a soft soil, he became quite aware of just how much further his destination has to go before considered being considered well developed. But walking through the tranquil woods immediately put a stop to that thought. Though he often jabbers away with the older men, the other men, other old men, whenever they met. Lately, he finds himself thinking back to the time of his youth. The golden wheat fields rustling in the evening breeze, his younger self running about within as though he were to, without a care in a world. Yes, without the single care in the world, 
as he walked across the icy ground as he followed as he found himself cloaked in a snowy silence one thought came to the forefront of his mind he was no longer young You reek of booze. Boss, you're not going to get roaring drunk. If you're going to get... <laughs> okay. If you're going out to get roaring drunk, can you at least bring some back for your boys? Boss, look here. These damned burden beast blind boxes. We've gotten three full sets now, except the mystery variant. This has got to be some kind of scam by Carlin Trade. He pulls out a remote control from the deepest recesses of his room constantly flicking through the various slides of an up projector. Every single one has information regarding Kyrg. Possible marching routes, the locations of military bases, the distribution of sentry posts, investigations of the Shigata. Within a week of him arriving in Kyrg, all this intelligence was already neatly organized before him, and yet again and again he forced himself to stop thinking about these matters to the point that he has managed to memorize most of it. He throws aside the remote control and grabs a collapsible chair close at hand, throwing himself deep into the embraces as he closes his eyes. Rather than looking at maps and military sand tables, he much prefers listening to the subtle sounds of snow falling on branches, making them rustle and creak under its weight. It reminds him of the sound of waves of wheat rustling under the moonlit breeze. Boss, what's the matter? Don't mind him. He's probably just drunk off his gourd. Let's get back to what we were talking about just now. I heard that the Le Leithanians want to build a new city. Mostly to get foreign trade going. Check out the preferential pol policies. The calculated returns for investments are unreal. But reality never goes the way he wished it to. Just like how his father always yelled at him to get out of the wheat field and to continue his training at home. Just like when his pipe stem loses a piece without him knowing. Just like how his la lost leg never returned. <sighs> the hubbub in the barracks fades away as his men all look towards him. His men, his lads, his soldiers. Everyone, change to live ammunition, then be on standby. At the break... At the break of at the break at the break of dawn tomorrow, we begin our operation. Our target is the statue of Karagondar. His voice is somewhat hoarse. The rustling of wheat in the wind has stopped. That's crazy. I have some stuff I still need to get. I think I've almost. Oh wait, no, I don't have all that stuff. Live up to Whoa. duty. What the fuck? Bro, what the fuck? Do I need to repeat myself on the battle plan? Feels fresh every time. <laughs> Losing sight. <laughs> oh, fuck, that was loud. How soon do you want them gone? Ah, there he is. The handsome man. Any inspection fail like a shooting star. That's what they say. What a character, honestly. <laughs> okay, um... On standby. You protect his ass. Blade uh... wedding will be over before you feel the pain.
crap, I can't let Harold throw his problem. The restorative vigor of that fortissimo. Sure, whatever you say, bro. Blade wet sunlight will have to wait. Still mal it use your weapon. Hello, Harold. Don't be up and heal that wound in no time. Right, he has two phases. Mirage! What the fuck was that? Can you feel it? The melodious emotion. The sunlight will have to wait. I assume that is the nuke everyone talks about. Get it together, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna beat SRS8 tomorrow, probably. I'm out of time. It's 3 a.m. almost. Um, if you like this video? Like and subscribe. I'd love to have you around. I've been having a lot of fun with the series. Um, the story was hilarious this time around. I was not expecting just so many jokes and then it to get so serious again. It's just, this writing is really, really good. It's able to make you feel happy and fun times and laugh a lot. And then like, then very quickly turn it on its head and make you want to know if your favorite character is an enemy. There you go. Thanks, Harold. Um... Uh, yeah. Um, I opened the Discord. It's in the description, and so will be the Ko-Fi if you want to support the channel. Um, up to you in the end, of course. Uh, on the Ko-Fi, I will be posting thumbnails early. And, uh, other than that, though, I'm done tonight. So, you better have a good night, and bye bye